Hi, I'm Nikolai, aka 56 Miner, and today we'll be unboxing our July Premium Box. This month's box is all about colored pencils. We'll go over some techniques for the medium, talk about working on a toned canvas, and I'll share some tips and tricks that I picked up on my art journey. Let's get into it. Our surface this month is an exclusive cotton pad from Rembrandt. This toned paper pad comes with two colors, an industrial gray, which is a great mid-tone that'll make any color really sing, and a mystic blue color, which is going to be really good for our reds and pinks. I love toned paper for color pencils because it really helps the colors stand off the page. We're really excited to include this Sketchbox Signature color pencil set this month. These highly pigmented color pencils are great for blending and soft enough for scratch-free application. While most color pencil sets are primary, we decided to go with more of a neutral palette while still including some of those fun pops of colors. For a sharpener this month, we have the Stedler Tuppy Racer, which is great to sit on a desk or to take on the go. For our eraser, we have the Derwent Brush Eraser, which is great for fine details and can be sharpened like a typical color pencil and comes with a brush to keep our work area clean and smudge free. For warm up this month, I want to go over a few techniques that are specific to color pencils as a medium. The first is going to be soft pressure blending. So with soft pressure blending, you're just using a light stroke in order to get some of that pigment on the paper. It's going to be the texture of the paper that really helps to kind of grab and latch onto that pigment. This does take some time to build up color, but it offers us our softest transition. By using small strokes and concentric circles, we can avoid any kind of line that'll break that illusion of that gradient. Our next technique is going to be called hatching, and this is where we use line in order to build out our color and our values. We're going to use short parallel marks in order to fill our circle, and you'll notice as we kind of build out this color that it's going to offer us kind of a direction and a three-dimensional feel to that circle. It's a fun, textured way to fill in an area of color that'll give you a little bit more volume. Depending on how many times you layer the color pencil, you can completely cover up that gray toned paper or leave it exposed like I am for more of an effect. Our next technique is called cross hatching. Now when I cross hatch, I like to start by going in with a base layer of directional lines and then build up that color post. By being conscious of the form that you're coloring in, you can wrap your lines, which will help create a more three-dimensional effect and depict form more realistically. It's also a great tool to use when you're trying to add texture to a piece. Our next technique is gonna be called burnishing. Burnishing starts with soft color blending, so we'll need to go in and get a good base layer going before we can use this technique. I'll go in with some soft pressure to build up those values, and then taking a lighter color pencil, we can go in and burnish it. What that does is it allows you to build form from dark to light, which is kind of unique to color pencils. Taking the white color pencil in our Sketchbox set, we can push this even further and create that three-dimensional effect. Notice that we can't really see any of the toned paper in that highlight area, and that's going to be because we've built up that pigment. Using our black, we can create a shadow, which will push the three-dimensional effect even further. Practicing these fundamentals are a great way to elevate your art, but make sure that you remember that a heavy hand will always result in a darker line. Now, I know working on blue paper can be a little bit intimidating, so I've gone ahead and swatched out our Sketchbox signature color pencils, and you can really see how the reds in the set stand off the page. And we also have the blues, which are a little bit more neutral. I'm going to use this to swatch out the other color pencils in this month's box. Our next two color pencils are going to be brand new from Derwent, and they're going to be the Chroma Flows in Blush Pink and Magenta. These light fast color pencils are super saturated and go down very opaque, and they're a perfect complement to that mystic blue color. It's that high contrast between the color pencil and the paper that gives it an added punch. By using a light pressure, we can blend these two colors together and create a subtle transition. The blue of the paper will act as a third color. Let's grab the Settler Blender that's included in this month's box to make that transition even smoother. By going over that transition point, we can blend out that color a little bit more, and it's going to remove a little bit of that texture of the paper, resulting in a soft gradient between those two colors. 
Our final two colored pencils are going to be from Karen Dosh, and they're going to be the Anthroconome Carmine and the Herclanium Red. These premium color pencils offer light fast color, which means it won't fade over time, and a super smooth application. Let's swatch them out next to our other colors. Right away you'll notice just how opaque these color pencils are. They almost block out that blue paper. Using our Stedler Blender, we can make that transition even smoother. And there we have it, all the colors in this month's box swatched out on our blue paper, which will offer a bit more contrast to our pinks than the gray paper. For a drawing exercise this month, I wanted to teach you a technique that uses negative space in order to draw things realistically. So for this exercise, we'll be drawing this stool, but we'll be focusing on the empty space outlined in pink, which will help us from getting caught up in the construction of the chair itself. Now, if you've never used negative space construction for drawing, it might seem a little bit tricky or strange at first, but you'll notice that it's actually a lot easier for you to tackle some of those visual problems, like depicting complex shapes. I'll fill in those shapes with our blue since it's going to be our background color, and then go in with our gray to add a few more lines. The hard work of this is already done though, because those abstract shapes give me the structure of the stool. While working from photos is great when you're in a pinch, I would definitely suggest you try this exercise at home using a chair or another object with negative space. You'll be surprised at how accurately you can draw that without actually having to focus on the object itself. My stool came out a little bit taller than the reference image, but that's all right. Once my outlines are established, I can start to focus on light so that we can render this chair realistically. Since we're gonna use the gray of our paper as our midtone, I'm actually gonna go in with our white to depict areas of light on the stool, and then I'll go in with some gray or some black for the shadow areas. This will create a really nice illusion of form. Be cautious of how much pressure you're using when you're in this stage of the drawing, because you don't wanna put down too much pigment too quickly. Now, since we're using the gray of the paper as the midtone for the stool, we need to fill in that background. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. And then in order to build shadow, I'm gonna take that blue color pencil and use it in areas where there's a cast shadow. If you've ever had a drawing and you wonder why it doesn't look quite right, try to think of the lighting in the situation. That usually helps give a little bit more realism to any piece. Next, I'll go in with that light blue again, just to kind of soften those shadows a bit and help that background stand out from the stool. Next, I'll take our black to darken up a few areas and give our stool just a little bit more structure. Using our eraser to pull up some of that color pencil where needed and to lighten up a few areas. And with that, our drawing exercise is complete. Hope you enjoyed the video, learned a few things, and if you post your work online, make sure you use hashtag SketchboxJuly. We love seeing what y'all create each month, and I'll see you next month.